Hey folks, this is Aleki and you're watching Station Ears for Beginners. In the last episode, we looked at mining and how to process ore into ingots. Now, let's look at manufacturing, which lets you turn those ingots into useful items. The autolate is the cornerstone of your manufacturing process and you start with a kit and materials to assemble one. If you need a refresher on how that's done, jump over to episode 2, Building Structures and Machines, and if you need to know how to provide power to your machines, jump over to episode 3, Electrical Power. To use a manufacturing machine, you need to turn it on using the power switch on the front. The arrow buttons and the search button let you pick the recipe that you create. I recommend using the search button because there are lots of recipes in these machines and it is much easier to simply find the one you want. Once you select the recipe, you can hover over the start button and the tooltip will tell you the materials needed. The first number indicates how much of that material is found inside the machine and the second number indicates how much is needed to create one of this item. To load the materials, look on the left side of the machine. There you'll find the item input port. Simply put the ingots that are needed in that port and the machine will take them in one by one. This moves them into the internal inventory of the machine, and by hovering over this panel in the bottom right, you can see everything that is stored inside it. If at some point you need to eject materials from a machine, simply pull this lever while it is on. The ingots will be ejected one by one. For now, let's get those ingots back in. Now when I hover over the start button, I can see I have more than enough copper for this cable coil. Click on the start button and the machine will start creating the item you selected. Some items are quick to make and others take a long time. As you can see, once it creates one item, if it still has materials and power, it will continue making copies of the same item. If you want to stop it at any time, press the start button again. If you do that, manufacturing will be immediately stopped. However, you can also change the recipe. In that case, it will finish the current item, but not proceed with the next one. It doesn't matter what recipe you change it to, it's not going to start automatically on that one. Another option is to simply turn the machine off. Any items produced get ejected out of the right side of the machine in this item output port. Now let's take a look at some of the recipes found on the autolate. In this video, I will highlight some of the most useful or common recipes for each machine. When you have the time, explore everything you can make, either in the recipe list or in Stationpedia. First off, the Autolate is the machine for producing construction items. More frames, doors, walls, as well as all the sheets can be made here. In the early game, especially the amount of iron sheets you start with will be a constraint, so get some iron ingots and pump out more. Secondly, the other manufacturing machines, furnaces, and other industrial equipment are manufactured on the autolathe. The furnace and centrifuge will get covered in future episodes, but today we will look in more details at the hydraulic pipe vendor, electronics printer, and tool manufacturing. Third, the autolathe produces chutes and storage items. Chutes are used to automatically move items, and I will circle back to them a little later in this video. And last but not least, it also makes basic versions of some of the items made by other machines. The worn gear is mainly made on the tool manufactory, here you can make a replacement for your basic suit should you damage it early on. Pipes belong to the hydraulic pipe bender, but the autolathe makes regular pipes too. And same for cables, which are usually made on the electronics printer. Next, we'll look at the hydraulic pipe bender. When placing additional machines, I recommend not putting them in a line like this. Items made by one will get jammed into the input of the next one. The input of these machines can only accept ingots, so the items won't be destroyed, but it can be annoying to repeatedly remove items from the input port. Instead, I like to place machines perpendicular to one another, like this. All these machines follow the same build process as the autolathe, but here's a quick refresher. Weld to iron sheets. Add four cables. Weld to plastic sheets and use the screwdriver to finish the machine. The hydraulic pipe bender has the exact same controls as the autolathe, and the same input and output ports. Let's take a quick look at some of the most important recipes that you will find on the hydraulic pipe bender. Most items that deal with fluids will be available in a gas and a liquid version. Generally, you should try avoid having liquids in the gas version, 
where gas is in the liquid version. For example, you can make canisters, which are created empty, to store additional gases or liquids. You can create pipe utility kits that allow you to create small tanks or canister holders that let you connect the canister to the pipe network. To obtain water and use it to stay hydrated, you will use the ice crusher, the water bottle filler, and the water bottle. On the hydraulic pipe bender, you will also find the atmospherics kit. It allows you to create an air conditioner, a filtration device, and a few other different types of items. There are also wall heater and cooler kits that can be used to increase or decrease the temperature in your rooms. The hydraulic pipe bender also provides you with the greatest variety of pipes. There are plain and insulated pipes for both gas and liquid. And there are storage tanks, both fixed and portable, for both of these types. Radiators are also made here and they allow you to exchange heat between the environment and the fluid in a pipe. Filters are expendable items that are used to filter gases. We saw these in the first episode when we looked at the filters inside your suit, but the stationary filter that you can build with the atmospherics kit also consumes these. The hydraulic pipe bender can create a few different types of hydroponics that have different benefits and drawbacks in growing plants. When we discuss planting in a later episode, you will see the pros and cons of the various models. And last but not least, several types of vents can be made on this machine. An additional active vent will be critical in setting up your first airlock on Mars, since your starter kit only has one, and you need two for an airlock. When I can, I like to place machines back to back like this, because it saves space and there are no controls or connection ports on the back of them. And if this video is saving you time in learning the game, then give it a like down below as well as subscribe and click the bell icon so you get a notification when I put the next one out. With the electronics printer, we once again have the same build process and the exact same controls as we saw already. So let's jump right into recipes. This printer deals with all things electric and electronic, so it's no wonder that all generators are found here. I'm showing you a few on screen, but there are more than this to be found. Of course, cables, heavy cables and cable fuses are found on this printer. There are a few other power transmission items. Transformers can limit how much power is fed through a wire, regardless of how much the consumers would like to receive. Of course, all kinds of batteries and battery chargers can be made here. The kit battery allows you to build large stationary batteries that hold a large amount of electricity for your base. The electronics printer also allows you to build mods. Mods are used to enhance your printers and they unlock tier 2 recipes in them. First, you would need to create the electronics printer mod, apply it to the electronics printer, and that will unlock mods for your auto lathe and other machines. Stationeers also has a robust automation and logic system. There are logic kits that can create specialized chips, or there is the IC10, which is fully programmable using the MIPS language. On the electronics printer, you can also make several kinds of satellite dishes that are used when communicating with traders. The computer, which can be customized with a large number of motherboards also made on this printer, has various uses. Depending on the board, it can be used to edit code or, for example, to see what traders are in range of your antenna. All right, next up we have the tool manufacturing. Build the same way, use the same way, so we'll jump right into recipes. First off, here you can make the mining belt and the tool belt, so if you need more of these, this is where to make them. Using a bunch of mining belts can be a great way to compactly store your ore. You can fill up a belt with ore, then put it in the locker, and 8 stacks of ore will only take one spot in the locker through the belt. Early on, you can also make the space pack, which is more efficient in its use of jump jets than your starter jet pack. Duct tape. You may need more of to repair solar panels or to repair your suit if it gets damaged. As the name implies, this is also where you make tools. You can make more of all the ones that you started with. And you also can make the arc welder, which is an electrical welder that uses batteries instead of fuel. The pneumatic mining drill, which uses highly compressed gas to drill faster than your electrical starter drill. The terrain manipulator, which lets you add voxels to the terrain and the plant sampler which is used in advanced plant growing. Once you upgrade the tool manufacturer with a mod, you'll also unlock the heavy mining drill, 
which is a fast but electrical drill. Don't get tricked by the Mark II tools. They are no more efficient than the ones you start with, but they do have a higher temperature resistance. It's useful on planets like Vulcan and Venus, but is not going to provide you any benefit on Mars. Now that we covered the main manufacturing machines, here's a look at some of the later game or less used ones. You have the rocket manufacturing, which is where all your rocket parts are built. Rockets are a way to sustainably harvest more ore without mining it yourself from the planet. The security printer is a machine that I personally have never used until making this tutorial. It allows you to create access cards and a variety of weapons and ammunition for them. Since there are no enemies in Station Years and I don't play multiplayer, I've never had a need for these. Now yeah, let's take a quick look at chutes. Chutes are essentially pipes that transfer items. They can attach to these input and output ports and will move items through them. Where a chute ends, the items will simply come out. If I produce a belt on this machine, once it is complete, it will travel through the chutes and come out the far end. There are a few other types of chutes as well. Here is the corner the window, which lets you see items as they move through. The junction, which lets you merge two chutes into one. The flip-flop splitter, which does the opposite. It takes items from one input and sends them alternatively to two different exits. The valve, which lets you open and close this segment of chute and prevent items from going through it. The overflow, which will preferentially send items one output unless it is blocked, then it will send to the secondary output. And the inlet and outlet. The inlet can be used to put items into a pipe network. With an open end like this, you cannot take items and put them in. But if you were to build an inlet, for example, we'll put a corner here. And on top of it, we'll build an inlet. The inlet can be used to manually insert items into a shoot network. If you have an inlet at the end of a chute, you can throw an item, like that ingot, will travel through the chute network and end up in the machine's input port, where it is added to the inventory of the machine. Another useful item you can build that is chute-related, though built with a separate kit, is the stacker. The stacker does require to be connected to power. What the stacker does is it will accumulate the items that arrive through its input, until either a different item arrives or its stack size has been reached. For example, I can set this stacker to a stack size of 5, turn it on, and then manufacture iron sheets. If you recall, when we first crafted things, they would come out one by one from the machine. Instead, stacker is accumulating these items and if you put your mouse over this lever you will see how many have gathered so far once it reaches the stack size five in our case it ejects them if you want to eject the items before stack is complete simply click the lever yourself when a different item arrives into the stacker even if the stack size has not been reached previous item will be ejected. For example, I now have an iron sheet in the stacker. If I create an iron frame, the sheet will be forcibly ejected when the stacker is filled with the frame instead. Using chutes, inlets, and stackers can allow you to create a more compact workshop. This inlet on the left feeds the autolate, and the output of the autolate is fed into a stacker, which will gather items from me. That way, if I am making 50 cables or 50 iron sheets, they won't be sent flying all over my base. On top of that, I have chutes connected to the inlet of this hydraulic pipe bender, so that I can throw ingots into the inlet and they will be fed to the machine. On its output, I could set up a similar stacker as I did for the autolate. So we corner and then using the stacker kit you need to pay attention which side is the input the arrows will tell you 
and also pay attention to where the power connector is since the stacker does need to be powered and then you have a functional stacking output system for your auto lathe as well since the inputs and outputs are carried through the chutes putting machines in close proximity isn't a problem anymore 